everybody, the Black Sox Chef is back at it again. What we have here is we have a Pikes Peak Roast. Uh, what you see on the table is all the ingredients that are going to go into our roast that we're going to do today. If you look over on this side, we're going to be using our Dutch oven. And so the very first thing you're going to see me do is I've got the oven already preheated at 300 degrees. We're going to take our olive oil. Uh oh, this was a new bottle. All right. And we are going to put a little olive oil in the bottom here. We just want to coat the bottom with some olive oil there. We're going to go ahead and get this thing started. We're going to set it on probably about four. Get this good and hot. And what you're going to see me do now is we're going to take our Tony Zachary's and we're going to season. Some nice good coating this roast like so because what we're going to do is we're going to sear it inside of our Dutch oven so now you've seen all of this and when we come back you'll see make sure you get some seasoning on the side too there so when we come back you're going to see us start to lay this inside the Dutch oven all right, folks, now we're back. Obviously, we've gotten our oil going pretty hot. We moved our Pikes Peak roast over, so we're going to go ahead and get it in so we can go to our sear started. That's what we want to hear. That's right there. So what we're going to do is, because our Pikes Peak roasts are so large, we're probably going to have to do two separate sears on here. Uh, we're going to sear this one first, then we'll sear the smaller portion. When we're going to take them out of the Dutch oven, set them off to the side so we can get our vegetables going in it. Um, so what you're gonna see when you come back is we'll have both of these seared. If you see, just like before with the steak, we're gonna set it in here, get it seared, we're gonna sear all six sides, the bottom, the top, both sides, and the ends. And then we'll get everything else inside, so see you when we come back. Okay everyone, we got the second piece in. We're letting it go ahead and sear on one side for one minute. Now remember, you have to sear a minimum one minute on each side. Then you want to remove your Pikes Peak Roast. So now, you can, as you can see, we have a nice sear. Now I'm going to turn this down to three. And if you look in the pan there, in our Dutch oven, you can see where we've got some of the seasonings down in the bottom. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and add our mushrooms into the bottom. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and add our onions into the bottom. We're going to get all those things in there. Okay, then we're going to give them a quick little stir in there. As you can see, obviously you can't smell it, but it's stinking good in here. Now we're going to add us a little cracked black pepper. Get that done, and of course, I'm going to add a little kosher salt there, three good, generous portions there, and we're going to stir this down again, and as you see we're just working these things in, we want to do these onions until they're translucent. what we're going to end up doing is adding those uh, that roast sit up sit it right on top of all this stuff okay and you get a nice generous portion of your garlic we'll add that in and again we're just stirring it up getting all that nice char off the bottom there okay And we're going to add in some carrots. Because what's roast without carrots, right? And then generous. I'm going to finish up this carrot right here. There. Finish those up. We don't need those. We don't need to put that back. Here we go. I'm going to stir it down again. 
and as you can see, starting to look pretty good here. All right, I'm gonna let that kind of cook for a second, and when we come back, we're going to add in our Merlot, our diced tomatoes, our Cheshire, and our vinegar. Now we're adding some red wine vinegar to this because the Pikes Peaks roast is not a super tender roast. And so that vinegar is going to start helping it to break down as we cook it low and slow. So when we return, we'll add those in and we'll show you what it looks like as we put it in the oven. All right, folks, now what we did, we just kind of let that cook for about three minutes, <clears throat> three to four minutes there. We just want to get everything kind of mixed in together, let them hang out and become real good friends. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to add in our diced tomatoes. All right, let's see, get those added in there, and again, stirring it down every time. By the way, Dutch ovens get hot on top of the stove, so, so we're going to stir it down every time. All right, we got that ready. Now, we're going to take and add our Pikes Peak Roast, get her nice and mushed down in there. I'm going to add this one nice and mush down in there. There we go. Then we're going to add some generous dashes of Worcestershire. Was that about 10 or 12 dashes there? <laughs> okay. And we got our red wine vinegar. Vinegar is going to kind of help us. I'm going to do it to the count of three. One, two, Three. All right, and I'm gonna add a little Merlot. Three cups of Merlot. We drank the rest. <laughs> and a cup of water just to make sure we got it up over the top there. All right, now what we're gonna do now is we can go ahead and turn this off. We're gonna take our top, set our top on here now. What I'm going to do, something a little bit different. Some people do it, some people don't. But I don't like to make a mess in my oven. Because I don't like to have to clean the oven. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take this Dutch oven. And we're actually going to sit it all the way on the bottom rack. Now, we're going to come back and check this in about an hour and a half. We're going to put a thermometer on it. What I did was I pulled out an extra pan just in case it starts to get where it's bubbling or bubbling over or anything like that. I brought an extra pan just in case for the second part of the cooking. So, now I'm going to close it up and we will see you when we're done. We're going to let this cook for three hours uh, at 3.15. We're going to upload this portion of the video, and the part two will show you the finished product. Thank you for hanging out with the Black Sox Chef.